Hello, this is Barbara Eastwick and today we'll be looking at how to create your first digital scrapbooking layout using Scrapbook Factory. It's a nice user-friendly program, lots of nice features. So first to get started, go ahead and bring up your software and then click on Design from Scratch and then Scrapbooks and we'll be using a 12 by 12 size today and then finish. Now we have a nice large canvas to work with. Let's get started. We'll click Insert Graphic from File and then we'll find our digital scrapbooking kits on our hard drive. I have mine from ScrapWow and I'll be using a kit from Designs by Shelley called Like No Other. So you just click once on your paper and click OK. In Scrapbook Factory, you'll want to stretch your paper the full size of the canvas, covering all of the white area, edge to edge. There. Now we're going to create a bottom border, so we'll choose this nice striped pattern, and then we're going to crop it. And we'll choose Editing Tools, and edit in photo editor and we'll choose our square crop and we'll move it down and click OK. Now what I'm going to do is set it down here on the edge and pull on one corner and as I pull it will get bigger and longer and it will sit nicely down there and you can arrange it any way you wish it's just click and drag and now I'm going to insert a photo mat paper so I'll choose my paper and this is a lovely paper it needs to be stretched though the patterns too bunched it's designed to be 12 by 12 so I'm going to crop it first editing tools and then you can click crop selected image and I'm going to choose the rounded rectangle and then reduce the size and then when I get it on my paper I'm going to stretch it and there you can see more of the pattern and then I'm going to arrange it and turn it a little bit and now I'm going to go do that two more times so insert graphic from file choose my paper click OK and then crop them and those are my three papers I'm going to use that as my photo mat. I'm going to go in now. Now I'm going to look for some embellishments. Some people call them elements. So I'll be looking in the file folder called elements. And there are a lot of really nice ones in this kit. So I'll be looking at those. And I think I'm going to use that green frame. and click OK. And the frame is going north-south and I need it to go east-west. There's a couple options. I could just stretch it the other way, but I think it would be better to go ahead and just rotate it. So I can go up to a range and then rotate and then 90 degrees and it'll just flip the other way for me and now I can evenly enlarge it and then just turn it and have it fit exactly the way I wish it to. And I think we're ready for some more embellishments. There's a lot of pretty ones in this kit. And I'm going to choose this pretty scalloped ribbon. To see where the two papers meet I always find that to be just a little too hard of an edge and a little bit of ribbon usually goes a long way to softening up where those two papers are meeting. So I'll just stretch and drag and settle it exactly where I want it to go. Again it's just click and drag 
there. Now we'll go ahead and choose some more embellishments. Again, insert graphic from file. And I really like that bracket. Now this is the right side bracket and I'm going to place it down here. If the artist hadn't given you the left side bracket, you could just copy that and then rotate the other one 180 degrees. Now Shelley gave us the correct left side bracket, so I'll go ahead and just move them in. There we go. And again, we'll add some more. I love that butterfly. And we'll just make it tip it and make it a little bit smaller. And I think she belongs up there in the top right corner. So I'll just set her up there and let her go. There. Now I think we're ready for our photo. And you'll get your photos the same way. It's insert graphic from file and then find your photo on your hard drive. And click OK. Now I'm going to set my photo over my photo frame and size it up. And now I need to send it backwards and get it underneath that frame. There's a few ways to do it. I think it would have been easier to just click on the frame and send, bring it forward. Um, I'm clicking Arrange, Send Backward, and just doing it several times until my photo drops behind that frame. There it goes. And then I'm just going to tip my picture a little and straighten it up inside of the frame. There. And now we need some journaling. So we'll go to Text Tools. Add your own text. And you get a nice text box. And for the title, that church is in Harper's Ferry. And you can do a lot of different things with your, just, you can add color, shape. Let's go ahead and put a pretty shape on it. We're going to do something a little whimsical and shape it in the shape of a wave. And our text will automatically shape itself. So just keep stretching it and moving it until you have the right formation of your letters. There we go. And now we'll do it again. You can enter it from text and we'll give it a time frame. And I think we'll make it that nice orange color that's also in the photo mat. So we highlight the text, click color, click orange, and click OK. And then we'll move it. I think it needs to be centered, the text. So I will double click on the box and highlight the text and click the center justification and click OK. There we go. Much better. And you can just arrange it any way you wish. Again, it's just click and drag. And there. And that's it. So to save our layout, we just go to File export as image. It'll save as a JPEG. We're going to save it at it's at 72 dpi. It's set at 96. We'll set it for 72. It's a little bit better. And then we'll name it, give our title. If I were saving it for printing, I'd have saved it at 300. But 72 is good for online viewing. And that's all there is to it. Thank you.